In this tutorial, we will learn how to create 2D engineering drawings. This is a preview of what we'll be doing today. So here, I've got a three page engineering drawing. The first page, as we can see, is the assembly. The second page is of the individual part, in this case, the bracket. And the third page here is of the pin. So by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to create and customize drawing sheets, add model views and edits, switch between first and third angle projections, edit decimals, precision and tolerances, and modify styles, text, and add parts lists. I will be doing this step by step with this assembly here. Um, if you would like to do it with the same assembly, you can use these dimensions and uh, model these two parts up and assemble them. So to begin, let's come up to the top left. Let's click on new. And then we have our templates pop up. We don't want a part or an assembly. Let's choose a drawing template. In this case, I'm going to choose an ISO. You'll see here we've got options for .dwg and also .d .idw as well. I recommend going with uh, .dwg as this is more cross compatible with the other Autodesk softwares such as AutoCAD and Fusion 360. If you do want to have your own customized template like I've got here, um, I've got a separate tutorial on that. Um, and you can have your own title blocks, own borders, etc. Okay, but for now, I'm going to go with iso.dwg, click Create. And now we're in the drawing file. So first of all, let's take a look on the left-hand side. We see here we've only got one sheet in here. If we want to add more sheets, we can right-click and select New Sheet. Okay, and then if we want to select Sheet 1 again, we can double-click on that. Also, if we right-click and select Edit Sheet, um, we can change like, the title here. I'm going to call that um, Assembly. We can also change the size as well, so I typically draw an A3. Um, and over here we've got the orientation, so if you want a portrait or a landscape orientation, and then we can select where the title block with all of our uh, relevant information will go, so I typically do the, the bottom right. I've also got a revision as well, uh, if you need to use that. So click OK. And then sheet number two, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to edit that, that's going to be the bracket. Okay, it's going to be A3 as well, exactly the same. Then I'm going to add one more sheet. I'm going to right click, edit sheet, call that, uh, that's going to be um, the locking pin. Okay. All right, so let's come back to our assembly. Now, first of all, we have the title block down here. This is the generic title block that's supplied. Um, I never use this. Um, again, if you want to create your own custom, uh, do watch the video on that. Link's in the description. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll stick with the one here. If you do want to do any quick edits to it, just come under Drawing Resource under Title Blocks, right click on the title block and select Edit. And then we can edit uh, anything about this. So we've got the smart text in here. We've also got all the lines, all the borders, etc. Okay, so we'll click Finish. Uh, once you're done with that, I don't need to save any edits there. So let's go ahead and add the assembly to our first sheet. So to do this, we come up to Place Views and then we select Base. Now Inventor's automatically selected my assembly already. That's because I have it open already in Inventor, but if your part is closed, it won't appear here. In which case, click on Open an Existing File, locate the file, select Open, and then it will appear. We've got some styles that we can have a play around with here. So we can do a shaded view. So this is already shaded here, so we can see the appearance. Let's turn that off for now. We've got the hidden line removed, um, or we can add the hidden lines. Uh, under scale, um, we can change that if we want. So we go 1.0, press OK. And there we've got our view. If we want to add a projected view, there are different ways to do this. We can double click on the view, and then we can project the side view or the top view using these arrows that we see here. We can do an ISO view like so. OK. So you notice here that this is first angle projection. I just turn on shaded so you can see a bit more clearly. This is a third angle projection. Um, but if you want to work in first angle, um, it's an easy switch. So if we delete those, okay, come up to Manage, click on Styles Editor, come under the Standard, under Default Standard, View Preferences, and you can switch to first angle just here. Um, I normally work in third angle, and I'll stick to that for this tutorial. So save and close. Let's put that view back in, so Base. I only want to have an ISO view on this page. All right, I want to bump that up a bit in size. Let's go for 1.5. Um, I don't want to have the front view, so I'm going to just click delete on that. Okay, so delete that view. Place this roughly in the center. I want to turn shading on. It's looking nice. Now I want to identify these individual parts. So to do this, I want to have a parts list. Let's come under annotate at the top and come under parts list. And here we need to select either a document or the view itself. So I'm going to select the assembly. 
Okay, that's looking good. Let's click OK. Now we can just left click and put that anywhere. Now, if we hold down the left mouse button, we can then snap that in any of the corners. I'm going to go for the top left. I we'll have a bit more information in there. So let's double click, right click on one of the columns, on column chooser. I'm going to add in material. So select material, add, click OK. OK. Make that a little bit bigger and move that, re-snap that to the corner like so. So here we're identifying the item, so it'd be balloon one and two, the quantity of those within the assembly, the according part numbers, description of each, and then material. So we need to identify um, item one and two. So to do this, let's go to annotate, select balloon, and let's click on uh, the bracket here. Okay, let's put in balloon one, right click, continue. And then for the pin itself, let's click on that, and then we can put in pin two. Now we can adjust these. So for example, if I want to um, move this around, we can just hold the, ed hold the end of the arrow and reposition that. I'm going to do the same for the pin. Now if we watch the arrowhead on the pin here, it will turn to a circle. Now a circle will only appear when it's in contact with a face only, and an arrow will appear when it's in contact to an edge. So it's just a way of uh, better communicating um, what you are trying to identify. That's looking good. Let's add a view to that as well. So I'm going to come down here and collect toggle the visibility and press OK. All right. So it says, yeah, view 10 and, the, and then the scale there. All right. So I can change that. Double clicking on this. I'm going to call that view one, put a space there. So it's saying view one is the uh, scale 1.5 to 1. So, so yeah, in terms of its size. I want to add a bit of information here. Again, I don't like this title block. I always uh, use my own custom one. Do watch the tutorial in the description for that. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll just go ahead and add in some uh, of the smart text information. We come under File, come to I Properties, and add in the company. I spelled your name wrong. And uh, OK there, click Apply, OK. And now we can see the smart text was pulled in the company, who it was checked by, who it was approved by, and the date. And then we've got today's date and the sheet number as well. Again, any more information on this, do check out the tutorial in the description. OK, so let's move on and input the other two sheets. We've got the bracket and the pin. Double click on the bracket. Again, place views, oh, not projected. Let's click Base. Okay, now we need to select the base part. So here I've called it bracket one, two, three. Okay, it's recognized that. I'm gonna put in a side view, a top view, and I go for an ISO as well. I'm gonna drop those down in scale a bit. They're a little too big. Um, let's try 1.2. Yeah, that seems okay. All right, with the ISO view, I always like to have that shaded. And for the purposes of this drawing, we don't really need hidden lines. And um, we can see enough detail there. That's okay. All right, that's looking good. Let's go ahead and add some dimensions then. So we come to annotate, click the dimension tool. All right, I'm going to dimension um, the total width of this part, which is 60. Now immediately we can see there are two decimal places um, and also using a comma. Okay, so if we want to change that again, we'll come under manage styles editor. All right, we'll come under um, dimension, so I just open that up, come under the default, so in this case, the ISO. Um, then we've got some units here, so I'm going to use a period as the decimal marker. And in terms of precision, um, we're just going to go for one decimal place. All right, we can do the same there if we're using angles as well. So save and close. Okay, so I've got my period and just one decimal place. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in um, the remaining dimensions. Now here we want to um, identify the dimension of this inner radius here. So I'm going to select that radius and just come out. Inventor will automatically recognize that and put an R in front of the number. So it's radius. In this case, it's a two mil radius. Press OK. Now I've got the same radius on both sides. Um, not really that necessary, but just for clear communication. I'm actually going to enter um, by two. It indicates that uh, uh, both those uh, radii are two mil. Come on a dimension, I'm going to do exactly the same for the outer radius. So in this case, it's four. I double click on that and put uh, times two. Okay. 
And now I want to put in this angle here. Okay, I want to put in a tolerance on that as well. So dimension uh, between these two, 90 degrees. It's looking good. I want to take off one of these decimal points. So manage styles editor. Come in the dimensions again, and then one there. And I want to put a dimension on this. So I'm going to double click, and here I have a lot of options. So I can come under precision and tolerance. Um, I can put in um, a symmetric uh, tolerance there. So yeah, plus or minus. Um, and in terms of degrees, uh, let's just go for uh, let's just go for one degree. Press OK. And now we can see we've added that tolerance in there. And you can do the same with linear dimensions as well. So if I double click this, we can choose um, the uh, the type. So I go for a deviation. So in terms of the overall height of this thing, um, we can put that as zero. Uh, so that's the maximum it can be is 60 millimeters. Um, and that could drop down to, uh, let's put minus, um, let's go 1.4 uh, 1 mil. Okay, so that can then drop down to uh, 58.6 millimeters, but um, only has an upper tolerance of 60. Okay, I'm gonna round off the dimensions for this final piece. Now for the chamfer here, we could use the dimension tool, but in this case, I'm gonna recommend using the chamfer tool. This is just really useful. So we click the chamfer tool, we select the chamfer itself, and then we select the refer reference edge. So in this case, I'll select this vertical edge. And here we can see the inventors then uh, calculated as to what that uh, chamfer is. So in this case, it's a 10 mil chamfer uh, by 45 degrees. So it's 10 mil vertical and 10 mil horizontal. Okay, and I'm going to also add in a center mark as well. I'm going to do that on the through hole. So I click center mark just here and add that right there. And then if I delete these two dimensions, we'll see a bit more clearly uh, the center mark right there. Another useful tool is to add text. Okay, so anything we want particular to highlight or make a note of, we can select the text tool, which is under the annotate tab. Click anywhere. Uh, here we can change the font, um, the size as well. We can make it bold, etc. And then we can reposition that. So just hold it down, um, put it in an appropriate place. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's go ahead and add the final sheet, which is the locking pin. We'll double click on that, put in a base view, and find the locking pin. So locate the file, click open, put in an ISO view and a side view, change that scale. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use two. Okay, position those. Okay, so that is a, uh, a very quick overview of the basics of putting together a drawing. So we just have a quick recap. We've got the assembly sheet here, okay, identifying each of the parts, and then we go into those individual parts. So sheet two, we're identifying the bracket, according dimensions, tolerances, any notes we can make, and you can add to this with the more information that you need. And on the third sheet, um, we've got all the information of the pin. Okay, I hope you found that tutorial useful. And um, yeah, any questions, please put them in the comment section and I'll reply as soon as I can. Aside from that, thank you very much and uh, have a nice day.